Over a year ago at CES, I saw the OLED G9 and it was incredible, but it's expensive. Gigabyte's here to maybe fill that gap with the CO49DQ. And I've got to say, it is enormous. This thing wouldn't even fit in my back seat of my car. <laughs> Ignore the do not open from this side. We packed it up this way, so it should come out just fine. One of the problems with Curved is that these boxes are so freaking deep. On the one hand, it's great. They come with a three-year warranty. On the other hand, you've got to find somewhere to keep this box for three freaking years, just in case it breaks down. We've got our factory calibration report. Got the base of our stand, got the other part of our stand, the column. Uh, One thing to note is they are using the nice double column design because it's a 49 inch display, 32 by nine. This thing is enormous. It's gonna need all the support it can get. As for the cables that come in the box, we've got HDMI 2.1, ultra high speed, DP 1.4, C13 power cable, USB B to A, but now, oh, oh my God, it's so big. I should just click, clack. It's going in, it wants to, there we go. There we go, just push it. Ah! (laughs) It's enormous. If you couldn't already tell, this thing is, 1800 R curve to help protect in shipping. They've got a really nice peel that we already peeled off to do all our testing. Really nice. You're not going to get any micro scratches. I've never seen any micro scratching from the little foam that comes on top of a display, but people complain about it online. So I don't know what they're doing, but the screen film will definitely protect it. As for the stand, it's not bad. It's got that base swivel that I personally prefer. And it's actually got quite a bit for a monitor this size. I wasn't expecting this much swivel. And then we've got some tilt and I'm not even gonna try to pivot it. It's not gonna happen. I can tell from the stand, it's not gonna happen. And I don't think anyone's gonna be pivoting this thing to go to portrait mode. It can't, you can't do it. It's not meant to do that, Bill. It is not meant to do that. As for IO, it's gonna be a little tough because it's so dang big. We've got our C14 power connector here. And then on the other side, Oh, it's nice and labeled for us. That's always a plus. It's got a headphone jack, two HDMI 2.1 ports, DisplayPort 1.4. We've also got our USB-B port for connecting to your computer uh, for any peripherals or firmware updates you might want to do, as well as uh, two USB 3.2 Type-A. Overall, design's pretty decent. We've also got pretty minimal branding, but it is a little cringe, like team up, fight on. I don't know if they need to tell me that, but I do love how hidden this Aorus logo is, even though it's on the back of the monitor that you're not gonna be looking at too frequently. There's only one more thing to do. We gotta plug it in and turn it on, but not before a word from our sponsor. Thanks Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. They securely break down what everyone's taking from you every month and then helps you track that spending and cancel the unwanted or forgotten subscriptions. So save more and spend less alongside 5 million members using Rocket Money. Go to rocketmoney.com slash short circuit. Okay, it's all set up here. Looks pretty good. We've got a fair amount of height adjustment too. Now that it's on the desk, let's put it about there. 3840 by 1080. Nope, we want 5120 by 1440p. Absolutely beautiful. And then this feels like garbage. So we're going to change that from 60 hertz all the way up to 144. Hey, there we go. Now, a lot of displays have been hitting 240 plus hertz recently, which is fantastic. And they're getting that 13,000 clear MR rating from VESA. It is still OLED, but because it's down to the 144, we're only going to get the 8,000 rating, which is still really good and better than most other gaming monitors. But, uh, it's a minor point that you might care about. You're not going to get 200 plus hertz on this thing. Uh, but what you are going to get is basically two 16 by 9 <laughs> displays at 1440p, which is just so weird. I've never been a fan of 32 by 9. Uh, for me, it's just too much screen all in one place. But some people love the whole idea of using like picture in picture or picture by picture and making like one side of the screen for your game, and then one side of the screen for whatever else you want to do, maybe Discord or Twitch, or maybe you're taking notes, maybe you're in class. I don't know, I'm not gonna judge. Now this display mode setting is a little weird. It's either full or aspect. The reason that's important is because if you hook up a console to this, they don't support ultra wide. And so if you go full, it's just gonna stretch the whole image across. And 
Maybe someone out there likes that. I don't think you should. So keep it on aspect if you want it to be correct. PIP, baby. So I want PBP, I want picture by picture. Whoa, that's great. So now what we need to do though, if you want to take advantage of this, if this is, you have to either plug in a separate device or you have to plug in uh, another HDMI cable to your computer so that it's sending two different signals to the different parts of the display. If you're just tuning in now, it looks broken because the screen is pure black. It's probably got a bit of that magenta tinge because it's QD OLED. We've got studio lights blasting on this thing. I don't know what to tell you guys. As soon as you take it into your home and you're just in like wherever, as long as you don't have full sun windows blasting on it, it looks fine. But this is short circuit, not long circuit. So we're gonna just play it the way nature intended at sweet, sweet 32 by nine. The nice thing about that, instead of using two separate displays is you've always got bezels, right? So if you've got two monitors side by side, you're gonna have that weird bezel in between. If you go with the PBP method, boom, now it's just perfect. Nothing in the way. I don't think I want anything else here right now. So let's, let's game. Doom is fantastic in that it will play at basically any aspect ratio you want it to. Look at the dual up video. It was weird. It was like four by three or so. I can't remember what the aspect ratio was for it, but it looked amazing. <laughs> okay, let's make sure it's all set to being pretty. Um, 32 by nine, not 1080p. We want 1440p. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> um, ultra, sure. Fly. One of the problems you notice with ultra wide is that, uh, look, not everything is built for ultra wide. So we've got this nice splash screen here but it only goes to here. And then this UI, since the UI is probably being told to just like draw on the left and that one's probably just draw on the right. They're on the extremes. As much as I love ultra wide when it works perfectly, when it doesn't, it just kind of looks weird and wrong and it can be hard to get the hang of it. This feels good though. Oh my God. It's like my entire peripheral vision is full. Just perfectly, perfectly full. Is 21 by nine just not good enough? And so you want 32 by nine? Cause 21 by nine just gives you a taste while still maintaining all of those bugs I was talking about. Whereas like, this is just right in my face. Like I cannot get over how cool this looks right now, especially with OLED and HDR. Like, yeah, it's only 144 Hertz, but because of those instant pixel response times from OLED, it looks really crispy. But you know, we know Doom looks good. What about the other HDR content? One thing that is kind of weird about this guy is our peak brightness is only listed at 456 nits from uh, Windows, which is usually correct. But what we found is that it will do a thousand. However, you're gonna have to change some things. So in our regular HDR mode, it's not in the setting OSD, it's not in here. So what you're gonna have to do is go out and then we got to go to APL stabilize. So ours is already set to high because we've been doing some testing but it will default to middle out of the box. And so you've got to set this to high or you're not going to get a thousand nits. We should see that even though Windows is stating 456. To the naked eye, this all looks pretty good. It's very vivid, it's very colorful. But while we were testing it, we noticed something pretty interesting. The HDR accuracy is actually not very good at all. Some of the worst I've ever seen, to be perfectly honest. However, when you're just looking at it in person, Unless you have something that is perfect or close to it, right next to it, you're not really gonna be able to tell. Maybe if you're a purist or a colorist, or you're just really, really good at looking at displays. Um, but frankly, even looking at this RE footage, knowing that it's not accurate, it looks pretty good to me. We notice, especially in Resident Evil 4, that it just kind of over brightens everything way too much. And so you'll have, let's say, a car, truck lights pointed somewhere and they're pointed way off here. Leon's standing over here. So he should just be kind of like soft lit by them, but he's not. He looks like the lights are shining directly on him. And unless you've got the game running simultaneously on two different displays, you're really not gonna notice. You're just gonna think, oh, it's kind of bright. But for a game like Resident Evil that wants to be moody and dark, it doesn't all of a sudden look all that moody and dark anymore. So I think it's perfectly fine for the vast majority of people. I think it's still gonna look good, but that can be a huge deciding factor for some of you out there. It's not going to technically be accurate when it comes to HDR content. As for SDR content, it's not so bad. We measured an average of 1.5.
However, once we check our maximum, it's all the way up at 9.1. So we found that blues are just kind of undersaturating and then reds are being pulled out a little too much. So again, it's like, it looks good. And most people aren't really gonna notice, especially when the average is so low, but a discerning customer might be a little more picky. As for color gamut, it's pretty decent. It's QD OLED, so we've got 99% coverage of P3 and then a whopping 82% of BT2020, which is strong, it's great. Now let's talk price. Monitors have been coming down in price quite a bit recently. And this guy retails for 1300 bucks. I know that's still a lot of money, but the thing is just a few years ago, OLED 32 by nine, 49 inches, 144 Hertz. Like this thing would have been two, three grand easy, if not even more than that. The only problem is that currently the OLED G9 would be $1,100 on sale. Obviously sales change all the time. So who knows whether that $1,100 that the G9 is going for is gonna stay, right? Maybe it goes away and comes back frequently throughout the year, I don't know. But what I can say is that if you're picking between the two displays and that's the price, go with the G9. If you're not, and it's at MSRP, this does look pretty compelling for 1,300 bucks. Since filming, the pricing of the Oris monitor has dropped to $1,100. If you can't get the G9 on sale, this is a pretty solid price point. Thanks for watching, that's Short Circuit. This is the Gigabyte CO49DQ. If you wanna look at another very similar panel, check out the Samsung OLED G9.